today we're going to be installing some new coil springs and shocks on my 2014 Rubicon. This kit took a while to get. Finally here, I actually ordered it for the other Jeep. So it uh, worked out, so we're going to put it on this one. The rear is going to be identical to the video where I put the rear spacers in. Might be a little bit easier because the shocks or the springs won't need to be compressed. Um, and then we'll do the front. Show you how to do that. I should have a uh, two inch lift when I'm done. And it's a heavy load kit, so it'll work with all the weight and everything that I have in the back of the Jeep. So let's get to it. First step, jack up the Jeep, which I've done. And then I'm going to use a jack stand on the frame uh, when I take the wheel off. And that's the first step. Power tools are the best. Okay, here we need to remove the sway bar link here, this control arm over here, the brake line right here, and then the shock. So just, just unhook the shock at the bottom. And it looks like that's the original shocks that came on the Jeep, so it should be a nice increased ride, better ride with the new shocks and springs. So the idea once that's all done, I'll have a jack underneath the axle. We'll let it down, pull the spring out, put the new spring in, put it all back together. Uh, shouldn't take too long. I'm going to work quickly on this one. Okay, so this brake line is a 10 millimeter. Let's go ahead and do the sway bar next. 18 millimeter. Okay. And the fun thing with the sway bar is you have to put another wrench right here to hold this side of it while you loosen it. So I gotta go find that. I use a three-quarter inch wrench on this side and then it's an 18 millimeter on the other side. Okay, next we're gonna and do the shock. Okay, next is the brake line. Those are two 10 millimeters. That's about the center of the Jeep in the rear up against the floorboard. I'm going to pull this out next. And next is the control arm. And I'm going to use that 13 sixteenths for that. Anytime you have trouble with something, getting a longer stick is always easier because you get more leverage. This one's nice because it has a, a long flange on this bolt, so it'll actually lock this up into place when you're putting it back together. I'm going to put this little hand jack underneath here just to raise it up a little bit and then that will let me get the shock off. Voila! Dang it. So we're looking at the bolts on the top of the rear shock. So there's one on each side. They're 17 millimeters. I'm going to go ahead and pop those off and I'm going to place the new shock in its place while I'm up there working on it. Okay, you might be asking, what's the difference between the front and rear shock? The rear shock has those two bolts that go right here. That sets up in there. The front one goes in like that and has all these little bushings that you put around it. So, easy to tell them apart. A little pro tip, when you take out the bolt, loosen one side, take one side out, and then you just, where the, the other one's in there, you'll be able to just hook the shock up into place. Makes it a little bit easier. Okay, let's 
so now, as I lower these, you see the springs are all becoming very loose. That one just fell out. On the Rubicon, there is an air hose attached to the axle right here, so I had to remove that. Okay, so I have two boxes of springs, the 2620 and the 2619. I had to look up to see which one's which because I believe they both look almost the same. So here is the rear spring. And here is the front spring. Not much difference. 2620 is on the left, goes in the rear. 2619 is the front. Alright, so we're going to put the, the rubber pieces on top. These little spacers that come that were actually on the Jeep. Those go on top, so we'll do that on both sides. These will look a little bit longer than what I had on there. So I might have to use my little strap method I used on the other video to compress these to get them up in. Anyway, I'm going to do that off camera, get them up in there, and then I'll show you when I'm done. Okay, just real quick, if you haven't seen this before, I just used a strap around the spring and just ratchet it down. Make sure the handle is closer to the bottom because it's easier to get off once it's in there. But uh, refer to my other video where I put spacers in my black Jeep, and uh, I'll show you how I... Oh, I did this, but these are too long to get in with the axle as far down as it can go. So I compress the springs a little bit and they'll slide right in. And then I'll just undo the strap. So now, all I have to do is raise the axle back up and start putting everything back into place. Low tip here. There's two nuts that look almost identical. This one here is the one that goes on the sway bar end link. It doesn't have like the, the loose washer built in. This one that has like the loose washer built in goes on to the bottom uh, bolt on the shock. FYI. All right, so that's it after the rear springs and shocks. And that is a considerable lift, a lot more than I thought. I mean, before, I didn't take a before picture. I'll have to see if I can find one. But before, there was about that much space between the tire and that plastic fender. And now you can look at it. Huge difference. All right, so we're here in the front now. Got the wheel off. Things we're going to look at. We're going to disconnect the sway bar here. We're going to take the shock off there. We'll put a jack underneath like we did before. So this is a 17 millimeter here, and sweat knives. It is hot here. Um, you buy wrenches. These have like a little ratchet thing to them. Love it. And you can just ratchet it. But I'm not quite sure where my 17 millimeter is, and I don't feel like looking for it. Probably in my tool bag with the Jeep is under the seat. But by the time I find it, I can have this off. You don't actually have to take the wheel off to change the shocks. You can change the shocks with the wheels on if you choose to do so. If that's all you're doing. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the new shock and put it in. The way I'm gonna put this together is I'll put this piece on first, the rubber thing. I'll stick it up in there, put another rubber thing, and then the top piece, a locking washer, and then the locking nut. Not really a locking washer, it's just a washer. Um, yeah. I just got to tighten it up. Now the new springs are a lot longer than this one, 
so I'm going to go ahead and lower all this down, pull this out easy. I might have to compress the other spring again like I did the other one um, to get it in, but uh, I think that's the fastest way to make that work. As I lower this right here, this is uh, the brake line. It's getting a little bit tight, so I'm going to go ahead and pop that off. 10 millimeters, do it. See how far the sway bar disconnect was. So um, there's no way I could get by without disconnecting that um, and any of the shock. I mean, that's a good 10 inches. So that's dropped all the way down. Let's get the new shock or spring and see if we can uh, get it in. Because this is at an angle, because it's uh, dropped down, and this bar causes it to drop down at an angle. When I pull it back up, it should go back into its, its position. Okay, so I'm tightening up the shock. Get it. Lined up down here, put the bolt back in. And then this side is done. I honestly say, I was dreading the front. I've done it before, but I couldn't remember how hard it was. And I was thinking it was going to be hard. And honestly, it hasn't been that bad. And I believe you can just uh, put the rose back on it. And once it's, it's under pressure, you can get it back in too. Oh, it's so cool. Finished project. You notice it gave quite a bit of lift to the front and rear. 